<laughs> See, some of these folks talking about you just going to burn for a few months. No, no, no. <laughs> The Bible says forever. In other words, God has paid the gas bill, and it will be on for, for a long time. In other words, you're not going to do like the Catholics teach. Well, yes, you go to purgatory, and then you give your money to the priest, and then they'll get you out of purgatory, and then you'll go to heaven. But you've got to give $50,000 because your husband was a great heathen. <laughs> you know, he says eternal damnation. Christianity teaches eternal damnation. I don't know about this burning a little while stuff. And then you have these new wave churches. Well, uh, you know, like my boy out there in the glass house, on the, I won't even talk, but you know who I'm talking about. He says, well, we do want to talk about the negative things. God is a positive God. He's positive, positive, positive. Think positive. <laughs> you can think positive about this, buddy. You're going to burn in hell too unless you repent. I do not have time for preachers like that. I'm sorry, my world is full of them. And what they've done is they've deceived the poor people sitting in front of them, and that's why we're not able to build a big house, because the message that I preach will make people not give their money. But let's go on here and deal with this. All right. We see why judgment came to the city. Go to Genesis chapter 18, verse 20. Yeah, why did God destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? Go to Genesis chapter 18, verse 20. We're going to see why judgment came. Of course, Jude talks about it, but I want uh, the scriptures to talk about that. Verse 20 reads like this. And the Lord said, the outcry of Sodom and Gomorrah is indeed great, and their sin is exceedingly grave. Don't you think for one minute that God is going to look at some exceedingly grave sin and turn his back? God's not like that. Men are like that. Oh, man can look at, oh, yeah, well, I know, I know what happened, but you know, uh, 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 yeah, brother, mm. Y'all seen that lately? Mm. Yeah, let that sink in. Let that sink in where it belongs. Mm. There's going to be a judgment bar coming down on your head from the eternal weight of glory that's going to hit you so hard that you won't know what a fist looks like. But see, I know what it is. I know what it is. See, that wasn't judgment, my friend. Judgment is coming. Stay in Genesis. Look at 19.24. God's still rapping since you want to rap. Look what he says. Then the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. He said, you know how I feel about that mess? I will do this personally. So God's not going to have no M chasing you in the BLs above hell. He will rain some stuff on you, and when he gets through scorching you, you're going to know the Christianity work. Now, no, hey, look, stay in the Old Testament, Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 16. I want to give you so much scripture on judgment, and so that when you go back to work, go back to your place, and you hear these people try to mock God and say, we won, and all this kind of foolishness, you say, wait a minute, man, we had a sermon on judgment of God. Share with them these scriptures. Jeremiah 20 and 16, we see that men did not repent, that brought them judgment. And look what it says. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 16. But let that man be like the cities which the Lord overthrew without relenting. And let him hear an outcry in the morning and a shout of alarm at noon. In other words, God says when I judge a city, when I judge a place, there's going to be an outcry and a shout. So when you see people rejoicing about injustice, you need to pray for your country because God will judge America. He must judge America. He has judged every country that has turned their back on him. And it's not about the white community nor the black community. America is a community all together. We're all in this boat floating together. And God is going to judge this beautiful country. And when judgment comes, guess what? White folk going to be screaming and black folk going to be screaming. Oh, Hispanics, you ain't left out. You going to be screaming too. The Asians, you going to be looking for a place to hide. Because God has no respect of persons. Some of these folk even think God likes them better than them. God's not in the racial mess. He's God. Was Jesus white? No, he wasn't white. Was he black? No, he wasn't black. What was he? I don't know. He's Christ. I don't have a black man living in me. I'm the only black thing living in me. And I don't have a white man living in me. 
I have Christ living in me, the hope of glory. Man, we walk around here, yeah, well, now you know how it is. You bigot, yeah, I know exactly how it is. Don't talk to me. Let me keep bringing something here. Let's look at verse 11. Let's go back to our text. Let's go back to our text. The church, church, I want you to know that God is going to judge, and when he judge, you're going to rejoice when he judge. Look at verse 11. Look at verse 11. Woe to them, Jude 11. Jude 11. The writer uses three men in past history in this verse to cast aside God's, that, that cast aside God's will and suffered the same terrible fate. And let's deal with this. Woe to them, for they have gone the way of Cain. That's the first man. And, they, uh, uh, and for pay, they have re rushed headlong, that is, into the error of Balaam. That's the second man. And perished in the rebellion of Korah. That's the third man. Now, I'm going to go through this very quickly as I give you the scriptures. First, let's deal with Cain. 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. 1 John chapter 3, verse 12. What happened to Cain? I could take you to the original text, but I want to go to 1 John 3 and 12 since we're close to that. The writer John writes, says, Not as Cain, who was of the evil one, and slew his brother, and for that reason, and for what reason did he slay him? Because his deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. Now when we deal with Cain, we see it right here. Cain is going to be judged by God. Why? Because he killed another man. And why did he kill the other man? Because the other man was righteous and he was unrighteous. He said we're not to be like that. And I'm going to say this. The Bible says that it's one of the original Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill. Whoever kills will be judged. Now let me bring you closer home. If it's you, you will be judged. If it's anybody in your family, they will be judged. If it's anybody in your family that did it, they will be judged. And please don't be screaming God's name. Oh, God didn't help my family. What? God don't help no heathens, especially killing heathens. And that goes for the whites and the blacks alike. And then you got so much race hate in this country. One day I'm going to wake up and it's all going to be gone. The dream is going to be gone. Because you're going to allow madmen to take away something precious. Madmen. Let me give you another scripture. Let's look at Balaam. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 15. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 15. Don't let people take your habitation away, church. Look what Balaam did. Forsaken the right way, 